welcome to the session on seven tips for winning at hackathons. Uh, before I get started, I just want to take an informal survey. We have a small group here, which is nice. Uh, how many people work at a startup? Probably nobody here. One person. What's your startup? It's called what? Channel Bridge. Okay. So, so what I'm going to do in this session is uh, I'm going to talk about my own experience with starting a, uh, a startup from a hackathon. Um, we won't get into you know how do you raise money and all the other kind of business things around it, but this session is more focused at the very beginning of a new venture that starts from a hackathon. Right? So we'll talk a little bit about what a hackathon is, what should you do at a hackathon, and most importantly, how do you win a hackathon? So I'm sure here in India, they probably, especially in Bangalore, they probably have a large number of hackathons in the area. Is that right? It's probably one every week. I know in Atlanta, where I live in the US, um, there's probably some kind of hackathon every two weeks in the city. Right? Atlanta's not a big city like Bangalore. It only has about six or seven million people, but uh, we have plenty of big companies and a lot of developers, so there's lot, a lot of hackathons. And uh, the startup that I currently work at, which I'm a co-founder of, is called Triplingo. Uh, we started the company as a mobile application um, for travelers going to foreign countries and learning the language, learning the culture, and other things like that. Uh, since we started the company five years ago, we've actually pivoted the company twice, believe it or not. And so a lot of it has to do with uh, what do you uh, feel is the market fit for generating a product that can work well and obviously make money, right? So we, this is uh, the screenshot from the original version uh, about five years ago, both on iOS and Android. Um, but we'll get into that in a little bit more detail uh, in a bit. But again, my company is called Triplingo. We're in the corporate travel space. We originally started as a language learning company, culture learning, it was basically for people traveling to foreign countries, help them learn the language, learn the culture, other things like that. We've added a ton of features, and a lot of what we did along the way was understand what the market really wanted out of a product when business and uh, leisure travelers were going to a foreign country. And again, we pivoted twice, uh, so we do things differently now, or we do different things now. But not really here to talk about Triplingo. Just wanted to give you a little bit of background so you understand where this comes from. So what's a hackathon? A hackathon obviously is some kind of event where you go and hack. They typically vary in duration. Right? So there are different types of hackathons nowadays. There are all sorts of different types of hackathons nowadays. When we first uh, did our, our startup weekend hackathon uh, about five years ago, there weren't a lot of hackathons. Most of them were focused on software. But now they have software hackathons, hardware hackathons, design, UX, all sorts of different things. Right? So the different types of hackathons, and also there are different formats for these hackathons. Right? So you have software and hardware and other types of hackathons, but there are also different types of hackathons. Right? So what we did at Triplingo is we went to a very specific event that they do all over the world called Startup Weekend. Right? So this is a hackathon that starts on Friday and ends on Sunday. And the idea is that it typically is software focused in some way, right? But then there are also corporate hackathons, like internal or extra net type of hackathons. These are hackathons with a very specific company that is sponsoring the hackathon, and they usually have some kind of theme around it. So for example, there was a corporate hackathon recently in Atlanta, which was by a company that does payment processing. And they sponsored a hackathon. They you know, had a lot of money and stuff like that. Um, and prizes, but the idea is that you go and hack something around payment processing or financial technology or something like that. And then, of course, you probably heard of different types of uh, vendor hackathons like Salesforce or AT&T. Um, so for example, Salesforce has a massive hackathon that they do every year in California where the grand prize is a million dollars. Right? So that's plenty of money to start a company, usually. Um, unless you want to go buy a couple of Lamborghinis or Mercedes or something like that, right? But they have a huge hackathon. They have a million dollars worth of prize money that they give out. Uh, at, sorry, I think the grand prize is a million dollars. And then they have smaller prizes, which are in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. But anyways, these are different types of hackathons that, that you probably see. We'll talk in a little bit more detail about some of these in a few minutes, if, uh, if you guys are interested. But again, the purpose of the hackathon 
for you at least, is you know you hack something, usually create a project from scratch. It depends on the type of hackathon. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're looking at participating in a hackathon, whether you're a developer, a designer, or if you're a business person, right? So these hackathons are not necessarily exclusive just to developers or designers. There are also business people who obviously go to these hackathons and their goal in going to the hackathon is to participate and maybe lead a team or have somebody help build out their idea that they have, okay? But in terms of the hackathon, the organizer's goal also comes into play quite a bit, right? So community hackathons like Startup Weekend are usually very free form in terms of what you can do and you know, basically they're kind of driven by the local startup community. And then we talked a little bit about the corporate hackathon. Right? So for corporate hackathons, uh, you have a specific company that's sponsoring it, they're putting up the prize and they're putting up the money to put on a hackathon, but they usually have a very specific goal and that is usually number one, to get some ideas for some of the products that they may have, but usually a lot of it is for recruitment purposes. So you have all these, you know, you have 100 developers or 50 developers who show up to do this hackathon and hack on financial technology, let's say. Right, so they have multiple goals. So you have to bear that in mind, depending on, again, what your goal is at a hackathon, you have to understand what the organizer's goal is. And then, of course, we talked about the SaaS and the vendor hackathons like Salesforce. Um, so Salesforce's goal in, in having this hackathon is to help push their platform forward. Right, Salesforce is a massive platform that has lots of different plugins and lots of different things and lots of external products that also run on the hackathon also run on their platform. So their goal for the hackathon is to help push forward, have new ideas, new products that are part of the hackathon. So typically a hackathon depends in length. It could be just an afternoon. I've, I've been to a hackathon before that's just an afternoon, right? Starts like at 10 a.m. and then maybe goes to 5 or 6 p.m. Uh, the longer hackathons sometimes are like a startup weekend is, you know, a whole weekend. Starts on Friday and ends on Sunday. And then I've also even seen hackathons that are a whole month. Obviously, you don't work on something on site for a whole month, but it's kind of like a remote hackathon. So some people do these kinds of things as well, right? But typically with a hackathon, right, what I think of it is that you hack and it's a marathon. We'll get into the marathon part in just a minute. So depending on the type of hackathon you go to, so you have slightly different formats, but they generally tend to follow this recipe. They usually start with something like pitches. So people get up and say, hey, this is my idea, come join my team. I have an idea to build an app to send messages to other people securely, whatever it may be, right? Any kind of idea. This is typically where a lot of business type of people come up and say, hey, I've got this great idea, I need some, some folks to put together a team and build this this weekend and get this idea of the ground. And once the pitches are done, usually by some kind of selection process, you pick maybe five or 10 or 15 teams, depending on the size of the hackathon, um, for who will continue and who will participate in that hackathon. Again, this also depends on what type of hackathon it is. If you go to a startup weekend or a community hackathon, there's usually an idea selection so that, you know, if 50 people come up and say, hey, I've got this great idea and I need a team to put this together, it typically doesn't have 50 teams working through the weekend. Um, it typically will only have 10 or 15 teams, right? So from there you form teams, uh, you hack, and at the very end of the hackathon you do a final presentation explaining the business concept and also maybe doing a demo, showing kind of marketing plan, other things like that. It's relatively straightforward. So for the hackathon that I did five years ago, uh, this is us, this, is, this was our, our hackathon team, and, uh, and this is me here working on uh, some, some uh, mobile apps that we were going to demo uh, as part of this hackathon. And again, the hackathon that we specifically participated in was called Startup Weekend. And um, we had a very large team on the first evening. So this, uh, this photograph was taken on the first night. Uh, we had approximately 14 people the first night on Friday night. And by Saturday morning, there were 10 people left. And by Sunday, there were about nine people left, right? So people kind of just dropped off at, because it's a lot of commitment to give a whole weekend uh, and especially work all night or late into the evening. Um, the, the, some of us didn't even go home for the weekend. We basically just slept on the floor. A lot of people did go home and come back. But again, it depends on the format of the hackathon and how time compressed it is uh, and things like that. All right. So again, we're here to talk about 
What's your goal for the hackathon? How do you win a hackathon? Right? So for a lot of people, winning, going to a hackathon, for them, it's about let's win some money, let's get some prizes, let's get some fame. So for me, when I went to this hackathon, my goal was to leave my corporate job and to do something much more interesting and basically you know, get into this startup world. Five years ago, the startup world was not as uh, cool as, as it is now. Right, nowadays, everyone wants to do a startup, and it's the cool thing. And you know, you have a friend who you know may work at a bank or something, and he's like, "I've got this great idea for a mobile app." Right? And like, okay, right? So you probably all have friends like this if you're in the software world. So there are a lot of people interested in these kinds of things, but for me, at least, um, I wasn't there necessarily to go and make friends or network or anything like that. My goal was to win the hackathon and to have something come out of it that would be kind of a stepping stone for doing something full-time um, rather than what I was doing at the time, which was in a big company uh, as a corporate developer. Right? So if your goal is winning, then you're in the right place. I can give you some tips, and we'll talk about the specific things that uh, we want to do. And again, you don't have to go to a hackathon just to win it. Maybe you just want to do it for entertainment or just, just to have some fun. Right? You can learn some new technology. Uh, you can work with other people who are smart. Uh, you can make some new friends and connections, do some networking and other things like that. Right? But for me, going to a hackathon, the best possible outcome was to win the hackathon and also do a startup, build a new business based on spending just a weekend vetting out an idea, having judges look at it, give you feedback, and things like that. So the idea that uh, we specifically did, Triplingo, at this hackathon, it was not my idea. It was somebody else's idea. But when the person was pitching it, I immediately picked up on the fact that the guy who was pitching it, who's our business person slash CEO, I immediately picked up on the fact that he'd done a lot of research into this. Right? When he was giving, normally when you give the a pitch at a hackathon like this, you don't have slides or anything like that. You basically just walk up in front of the room, in front of a podium, again with no slides or anything, and you just say, this is my idea. And you have exactly one minute to do this, usually. Right? And if you make the first cut, you get two minutes. Right? So you have to be very keenly aware of somebody pitching an idea uh, in terms of how they describe it, how well they're describing it, and how much research you think that they've done into this idea. Right? There are a lot of people who go to these hackathons and say, well, I've got an idea to build this mobile app that does messaging because I think it'll be amazing. It'll be even better than WhatsApp. And then they'll walk off. Right? That's their basic idea. As are very good, right? But if someone comes up and says, I have this great idea for building a mobile application to help foreigners when they go to foreign countries, because 90% of foreigners who go to a place like China don't know the language, they don't understand the culture, et cetera, et cetera, right? Someone who pitches and gives a detailed explanation of what they want to do and they've thought about the market fit makes a huge difference in terms of your probability of success for a hackathon. So the first step is, whether you're a designer, a developer, or a business person, you have to be prepared before you go to a hackathon. You have to do some work up front. And again, these, goal, the, these seven tips are for if you want to win a hackathon. If you're just going for fun, who cares? You just show up. You don't have to expend any of your time uh, into getting ready. right? But again, these seven tips are for how to win a hackathon. So being prepared means having a game plan. Right? Understand what the hackathon has in terms of the format, and also, most importantly, what are the criteria to win, and how will your team that you join meet them? Right? And if you're presenting an idea, have mock-ups of the idea ready, and we'll talk about hit the ground running in just a second. But one of the things that the person who pitched the Triplingo idea had was he actually went and used, he did everything in, in PowerPoint or Visio or something like that, uh, instead of using a, new, uh, a, a tool like Balsamic to do mock-ups, but he had detailed mock-ups of 30 different screens for the specific product he wanted to build. Right? So that helped us tremendously to start building the product very, very quickly and working on the design. So we were able to, because he'd already done all this work, we were able to hit the ground running. We didn't have to do mock-ups. We didn't have to kind of think about the product in too much, you know, at, at too high a level. We could think of the product more at the lower level and say, okay, how do we make this UX better? How do we come up with the design for something like this? Okay. Very important that, to hit the ground running. The other thing is that I, I went as a developer, right? So that's from the business point of view, 
uh, our, our CEO had everything ready. He had mock-ups, he had a business plan, market projections, et cetera, et cetera, right? But as a developer, I got my laptop ready. I knew that when I joined a team, these were the two different kinds of things I could do. Number one was build a mobile app. The other thing I could do was basic web stuff, whether it was server side, you know, whatever, right? So I kind of already had these technologies in mind and I wasn't trying to learn something new, right? Because again, my goal was to win this hackathon, right? I didn't want to go there to, to learn how to do web development with Python and Django, something I don't know anything about, right? But I know Rails, I know Java, I know all these other technologies that I can build something with, and I knew them well. I had my laptop prepared with everything that I would possibly need to be able to either build a mobile app or to build a web application using some of the technologies I mentioned. Right? So that's what it means to be prepared. I also have that mentality, be mentally prepared, get some sleep the week before, get a lot of sleep the night before, right? and just kind of be mentally and physically prepared to be able to do this long marathon over the course of a weekend. So the second thing that was probably the most important was we spent quite a bit of time practicing the final pitch and presentation. I didn't spend much time doing this except for the demo. But we sat together as a team and we ran through what our pitch and presentation for the final presentation at the end of the weekend would be, okay? So if you're pitching the idea, and again, I didn't pitch the idea. Um, I, I helped pitch it, but I did the demo and I helped pitch a little bit of it, but our main business person pitched the idea and he practiced the pitch. And remember, we were working on the software and working on the pitch simultaneously. So as we came out with features in the software, we would take a screenshot, we would hand it over so that it could be included in the final presentation. So we kind of iterated over and over and over on these things during the course of the weekend, right? So he practiced the pitch probably starting Sunday morning at around uh, 8 or 9 a.m. The final presentations were to start at 5 p.m. He probably practiced this 10 slide pitch deck about 20 to 30 times, right? So that when he got up there, he didn't have to read his slides. He had everything memorized, and you only get five minutes. So there's a lot that you can talk about in terms of your idea. So the hard part is not how do you fill up five minutes explaining your idea and demoing your product. The hard part is how do you take all this stuff that you've done over the weekend or this idea that you have and distill it into five minutes so that it appeals to the judges and they want to select your team and your idea to win the weekend. So the hard part is being very concise and precise about this and also giving a very good presentation. I've been to hackathons before as a mentor where the team that won, the only reason that they won, right, their idea was kind of stupid to be honest with you, but the only reason that they won was the person who gave the pitch did an amazing job with the pitch. She, she really sold the idea to the judges. She gave a really polished presentation. Their idea was kind of crap, right, in my opinion. But they did such an amazing presentation that the judges just naturally gravitated to this team and to this idea, and they ended up winning, okay? It was a little bit, you know, a lot of us who were there as mentors thought it was a little bit of a joke, but that's on the judges. We had nothing to do with that, right? So, again, Spend a lot of time on the final presentation, or whoever is doing that needs to spend a lot of time doing that. You, I don't think that it's possible if, for example, if you're a developer or a designer and you're working on the design of the product that you're trying to build or you're writing the code for the product that you're trying to build, I don't think it is realistic for you to also give the final presentation because you just don't have time. So if you're a developer and you want to be the business person and kind of bring everything together and you know, you're the, the product owner, let's say, then you need to find somebody else to write the code. You can't do both, right? Because it takes a, a tremendous amount of time to really distill a presentation into something good, right? And come up with the product metrics and other things that you can put into it um, to make sure that everything works well and you give a nice presentation. So the third tip is, split into sub-teams, right? So if I go back to this picture really quickly, right? We were actually split into sub-teams here, right? So the, the three of us were working on the mobile app. 
these three people were working on the web application. So my immediate idea was because we have such a large team and because we have uh, eight developers on the team, let's not all focus on doing one thing, right? Let's, let, let's reduce the, the risk that we won't finish anything by having three or four of us work on a mobile app, and three or four of us will work on the web application. Basically, we build the same application, one for mobile and one for web, right? The guys back here, this is our, uh, our business person who owned the idea, uh, this is our designer, and these guys were working on marketing, right? So we were all split into, sub, well, when I say marketing, they're working on kind of the pitch deck and marketing and other things, you know, how do we market the product and, you know, what's the business fit and things like that, right? So we, we split into sub teams to help us have as much velocity as possible as we were working through the weekend, right? So again, and this depends on your product, right? So you obviously have to have one group of people working on the business plan, the marketing plan, and the final presentation that you wish to pitch. And then, depending on what you're doing, web application, mobile application, you may have some server-side component. If you're doing a big data hackathon, for example, some data analysis and, and algorithms and machine learning and things like that, right? So we split into sub-teams so that we all weren't working on the same thing. And generally, uh, what, what actually ended up happening at our hackathon is that it was just me and another guy working on the mobile application, okay? And we had four people actually working on the web application, um, but we kind of tried to build the same product in two different ways, one for mobile and one for web, right? But again, this depends on the size of your team. If you don't have that many people, uh, obviously you can't do that, but it does help to break into smaller teams and to be very focused on what it is you're trying to accomplish over the weekend, right? And I spoke about this already. Going to hackathon can be an interesting way to try to learn something. I know there are some hackathons which are specifically targeted around learning some new technology. And this is great if that is your goal, to learn new technology. But again, I went to this hackathon, and another one that I did, uh, which we didn't win first place for, but we won second place, and we won s some specific prizes for some of the stuff we built. Right? But our goal was to win, and our goal to win meant that we use technology we knew because you don't have time to learn a new technology. And to be honest with you, if you don't know some technology, going to a hackathon and trying to hack on something relentlessly for three days with you know sleep deprivation, lots of coffee, uh, whatever, a lot of pressure is not the best way to learn new technology. Right? What's the best way to learn new technology? What's that? Right, you have a fresh mind, and what do you do, right? Like, what do you do when you want to learn a new technology? Do you kind of do it at work, or like, what's your, just, just throw something out there. What do you do? Right. Right, so, so the gentleman says, have a quick tutorial, start exploring it, look at the code, write some code. You do it leisurely. You do it at night after you've had dinner. You have 30 minutes or an hour, right? Whatever it may be. You do it on the weekend when you're free. Hey, I want to learn some, some closure. I want to learn Python because I've never done that before. Yeah, you take your time so you can slowly absorb something. A hackathon is the opposite of that. <laughs> hackathon is relentless pressure over a small amount of time to do something. So use the technology you know. A high pressure environment like a hackathon is not a good place to learn something new, okay? And again, use tools, languages, and platforms that you can code fast with. Right? This, this, this is probably very important if you're on the development side of a hackathon. Use stuff you know. Have everything ready on your laptop. Use as many libraries as you can so you don't have to write stuff yourself. Your focus should always be on building whatever the specific product is, not trying to write a library that's down here at the low level. You want to operate at the high level and build something as quickly as possible. Right? And what we specifically used for this startup weekend is uh, we used a tool that allowed us to very, very quickly prototype a real mobile application, right? So the, the, the specific tool doesn't really matter. Right? I can tell you if you're interested, but the specific tool didn't matter. What we didn't want to do is we didn't want to write stuff in Objective-C. One of the things that we came up with almost immediately was to make a big splash during the final presentation, let's build that same app 
right? This again, this kind of language learning traveler companion application. Let's build the same app for iOS and Android and let's demo it in the final presentation. We thought that if we did that, the judges would go, holy crap, you built an app on two platforms over a weekend, right? We were, again, we're trying to impress the judges as much as possible so that they would give us points so that we would win. So we used a very specific tool that allowed us to do cross-platform development from the same code base. But we chose that, I already had that in my mind, and when I, when I told the other guys that I was working with that, hey, let's do this, they were on board with it immediately, and we started building it right away, right? And the last bullet on here is also very important. If you get stuck on something, spend a little bit of time trying to fix it. When I say a little bit of time, five minutes, 15 minutes, a maximum of maybe 30 minutes. Again, if you're the developer, your goal is to actually produce something. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody expects you to go to a, a startup weekend or a hackathon and produce a, follow, a polished result, right? Like if you're building a mobile application, they don't expect you to actually take that mobile app and publish it to the app store over the weekend, right? They, you, it just has to be good enough. It has to impress the judges and convey the idea that the product is trying to do. So if you get stuck, you move on. Right, it doesn't matter what you have to do to move on. You cut corners and you just hack through it, right, that's why it's called a hackathon. You just hack through it and you move on as quickly as possible. Don't worry if something doesn't work. You can always come back to it later if you have time. Oh, and by the way, you won't ever have th that time to come back and revisit it at a hackathon because you're working so quickly that you generally don't have time to come back and fix something unless it is very critical. Number five, remember your goals. Right? What are our goals here? For a startup weekend, you're building a business. Who are the users? What is the potential market size? What's the revenue? What does the product look like? Right? What is going to be an MVP? How do we test the product? These are all different things that you want to cover in a pitch deck at the end. Right? You also want to demo that you actually built something. Very important that you actually demo that, hey, we actually built something. When you just come in to this hackathon, and just write some slides, you know, you're not gonna win a hackathon like that, right? Yes, you do have to have very good looking slides that convey the idea and you have to do a great presentation, but if you don't actually show that you built something over the weekend, all you've done is just written some slides, right? And judges will pick up on that very quickly and you won't get many points. And so for startup weekend type of hackathon, right, what are your goals? These are your goals. You're building a business. For a corporate or vendor hackathon, what are the criteria to win and how many of these will you meet? So there's another hackathon we did, aside from the startup weekend, maybe about a year later. It was uh, before a big startup competition, pitch competition uh, in the Atlanta area. So they did like a Saturday, Sunday hackathon. Started Saturday morning and ended on Sunday. And, and only three of us entered this for my company. And um, it wasn't a corporate or vendor hackathon, right? It was just kind of a general hackathon like Startup Weekend, but format was slightly different. And you could bring your own idea as well. But what we did is we built a, a companion application for our main app over that weekend, which was essentially like a travel magazine. Hey, you're going to India, or you're going to Switzerland, or wherever. You could pull up this app, we called it Triposaurus, and it would uh, give you like, you know, here are the restaurants you should go eat at. And, you know, these are some of the sightseeing you could do. And it would, it basically what we did is we aggregated data from the internet, various different sources on the internet, and we created this magazine that you could put onto your iPad and have all this content for the destination of the country you're going to, right? It's a very simple idea, but we thought it was very powerful. But um, what we actually wanted to get out of that weekend, aside from putting prototyping this product, right? So our first goal was to prototype this product, not something we do during our day job at our startup, but something more that we wanted to kind of maybe extend and experiment with. Uh, and while we were at the hackathon, the one of the uh, sponsors of the hackathon was the Weather Channel or Weather.com. Weather.com is a big company. They're based in Atlanta, and they basically, they have a TV channel called Weather Channel in the US, and they own weather.com, where basically you go to check the weather, okay? But they had a very specific reason for being at this hackathon. They had this API that would expose weather data for like today and you know next week forecasts, but they also had historical weather data. 
Okay? So what we did is we used their API, we pulled in their data, we, we wrote a very simple algorithm to go and compute what would most likely be the weather in a specific destination at a specific time of year. So you open up this app that we built, this iPad app, during the hackathon, you open it up, you say, I'm going to Switzerland in the middle of July. So it would, you know, it would go and pull in, and specifically, I'm going to Zurich, let's say. Right? So we'd go and pull in interesting things about Zurich. Right? We had an RSS feed for that. We had an RSS or uh, an API that we used to get like restaurant data. And we integrated this Weather Channel API to go and predict what would most likely be the weather in the second week of July. And we incorporated that into the app. And we ended up winning first, we basically ended up winning the Weather Channel prize, which I don't remember how, what exactly it was. I think it was like an Xbox and a 50 inch television, or maybe it was $500 or something. But we specifically targeted to win that prize by incorporating their API um, at, as the sponsor. And there were a couple of other sponsors there as well that had very specific things that uh, they wanted uh, developers to work on. So again, you know, what's your goal for the startup weekend? Right, if you're doing, or for a hackathon, startup weekend, if you're going to a corporate or vendor hackathon, know what the rules are and know what the criteria are, right? And again, are the goals expressed or demonstrated in your final presentation? All right, so one of the key things that I've talked about is having a great presentation, also demoing something that works. It doesn't have to be perfect, but de demoing some actual work that you did for a product that you built. Right, so it's very important to have those two things. Probably the third most important thing is having an awesome design when you're doing your presentation or when you're demoing the product that you have. Right, having an awesome design makes a huge difference. Yeah, you could just build, you can build something really nice and just have like a plain web page and just use kind of standard markup and you know, it doesn't look great, but hey, it works, right? Unfortunately, to impress the judges that are at a hackathon, um, that is not enough. Having a nice design with a logo, layout, colors makes a huge difference, right? You, what you have to do typically at these hackathons, there will be designers that will be there. And as a team lead or somebody on a team, uh, you have to go and find a designer and say, hey, look, I want you to join my team. Usually there are very few designers at these hackathons, unless, of course, you're at a design hackathon. But if you're at a startup weekend or one of these corporate hackathons, there won't be a lot of designers there. So you have to find a designer as soon as possible and say, hey, come join our team and come help us do this. And in fact, at our startup weekend hackathon, we had, we had a designer. It was this guy right here. He's still with the company as our, uh, as our main designer and UX person. And he was actually in line in front of me as I was checking into the hackathon. And I, you know, I said, hey, how's it going? What do you do? Oh, I'm a designer. And immediately I said, oh, you're a designer. Whatever team I join, I'm gonna come find you later and you're gonna help us do our design. In fact, what he did is he did the design for us and he also did the design for another team. Because again, designers are commonly in short supply at a hackathon. So you have to find one and grab one as quickly as possible and in fact, the design that we use even today, so this is our design and this is our distinctive uh, logo that we have. Uh, this was, this whole thing uh, he did on that startup weekend. We're still using the same design and the same logo that you see here. You can see uh, if you have the app, this is basically the icon. We have very distinct brand coloring, et cetera, et cetera. But he actually put all this together on Saturday morning at that hackathon, okay? We still use the same thing because we love the design. It's very distinctive. Um, it gives us exactly what we're looking for in terms of brand recognition, right? So once you have a designer, use the stuff in the demo and in the presentation so you have kind of a fluid arc from the stuff that you have in your you know, PowerPoint or Keynote presentation deck along with the demonstration. So when we built the mobile app, what we did is we incorporated the exact colors that were also used in the presentation deck. So everything looked polished from top to bottom. All right? It makes your team look professional. Makes it look nice, right? 
And a lot of this is impressing the judges, right? If it, if it looks good, it must be good, right? So, number seven. Right? All these points are very important, but I'll throw a couple of stats at you. When you go to a hackathon, approximately half of the teams never finish anything. They don't really finish a presentation deck. They kind of just throw it together at the last minute. They usually don't finish or even come close to finishing a demo, right? So what we did is we came up with, aside from splitting into subteams, we came up with the schedule of when we wanted to hit major milestones, when will the presentation be ready? When will we have the demos ready? When will the design be ready so that we can incorporate it into the presentation? And when will the design be ready so we can incorporate it into whatever product we're building? Right, very important to have points where you communicate with everyone, right? Because one of the problems with breaking into sub-teams, obviously whenever you have different teams, what's the first problem you have? It doesn't matter if it's a hackathon or if it's your day job building something. Communication, right? So what we did is we put milestones in place to say at 8 a.m. on Sunday morning, we're gonna go and check, see where everyone's at at noon, we're going to start incorporating the final design, the colors, the logos, everything both into the presentation and into the software demonstration that we're putting together. Right? And I talked about this a bit earlier, which was if you get stuck, move on. The reason for that is this bullet point right here. If you get stuck, just move on. You don't have to tell them that you didn't finish this specific feature. You can just highlight the things you did do. Right? is better to have something to demonstrate than not have anything to demonstrate. It's better to go up there with something that's slightly broken rather than something that doesn't work at all or is not even close to being completed. Right? So our whole motif for the weekend was let's do an awesome presentation and let's make sure we have something really nice to demo. Sure, all of it doesn't work, who cares? Right? We'll just highlight the stuff that we did finish. Right, here's the product we're building. It's an app for travelers going to foreign countries. Here's some of the features that we're gonna have in this app. This is how we're going to sell it. This is the price point. This is the market reach. Oh, and here's a demonstration. Here you can see this is, these are the four slang phrases when you go to China or to France that you can use to say hello, right? Here's some culture content, right? Basically show that and demonstrate that in an application. So. All that is to say, you have to have the big vision, but you break down into smaller chunks so that you can demonstrate something. You have to demo everything, right? So what we demonstrated was what we call our slang slider. Show the same phrase in four different slang levels for a specific country, right? We made that fun. So what we did is we said, if you're going to France, there are four different ways to say hello, right? And we didn't, we actually said it, but we kind of demonstrated it by saying, you know, when you go to France or any foreign country, you don't typically say, hello, how are you doing today? What you say is, hi, or howdy, right? Or what we did is we made an allegory and we said, if you're in the US, if you're in the South, you might say, hey, y'all, how's it going, right? Or if you're, you know, in California, you might say, yo, what's up, dog, or something like that, right? So we made it, we made it interesting and we made it funny and we demonstrated this both in English and in a foreign language, right? So uh, the, our business person had already done the research for French, so we already had these phrases, right? You can say, comment allez-vous in French, which means hello, how are you, which is the formal, or you can say, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna have trouble remembering this now, um, or you can just, I'm trying, trying to remember exactly how you say what's up or hi, right, in French. I think it's just, salut, thank you, right? I should know this. Um, we support 25 languages, so I can't remember all of them. Um, but, but anyways, you get the idea, right? So we were able to demo something, we were able to make it interesting and exciting for the judges, and again, we were able to actually demonstrate this thing. I pulled up an iOS simulator and an Android simulator and showed the features that we finished on the screen, on the projector, over the course of the weekend, right? Or the stuff we worked on over the weekend, we're able to demonstrate and actually show this. And the other thing that we did to have extra splash is we installed the application 
on an actual Android device and an iOS device and said, oh yeah, these aren't just screen mockups. We actually built it and we passed around our phone and said to the judges and said, here, you can play with this. And that helped us really a lot. Again, both about demonstrating something, having a little bit of kind of excitement around what you're doing, and also showing some of the business, um, the, the business concepts in, uh, the business concepts for the product in actual kind of real form. Right? It helps convince the judges that you've actually done something over the course of the hackathon. All right. So those are the seven tips. Right? What, what I want to do is I just want to stop here for just a second um, before I go on to the remainder of these slides, which is what do you do after the hackathon? Right? And some other things to watch out for. I just want to stop here for just a second and see if there's any comments or questions or anything. Right? I think I've laid everything out. Right? So is there any comments or questions? Who's talking? Is that him or is that someone in the audience? I can't tell. Okay. So any comments or questions so far? Hopefully all this makes sense, right? Hopefully you've, you've had similar experience if you've done something, right? All right. Yes. I didn't know anybody when I went there. That's right. Okay. And this is an excellent question. So the comment is, is when I went to this hackathon, uh, the startup weekend to be specific. I didn't know anybody there. I'd, the, everybody who was on my team I'd met for the first time on that day. And the question was is can you go as a group? And the short answer is absolutely. We had some people at the startup weekend we were at who they had an idea. They came as a team of like four, five, six, seven people and they were going to specifically work on something whether or not their thing got picked. So yes, you can do that. Right? In fact, the, the other hackathon where I was talking about the kind of travel magazine application we put together, we went as a team of four people to that hackathon. So yes, you can do that. Right? And oftentimes that works really well. So there have been a couple of hackathons um, that I've helped mentor where uh, the, basically a group of five or six people showed up. Uh, they had an idea in mind already. Right? They, had, they already had a small startup uh, that was in the um, kind of voice and internet space, voice, SMS, internet space, and they had something very specific they wanted to build. So they showed up, <laughs> they had everything right uh, in, in order of what they wanted to do. Um, they were well prepared. Uh, well, when I say well prepared, they were extremely well prepared. Uh, they came with computers and monitors, right? So they dragged all these monitors in. They brought sleeping bags with them, right? They had everything. They were like really well prepared. Right. In fact, I should have thought of this before I went to this hackathon. I should the startup weekend I did. I should have brought a sleeping bag and a pillow, right? But I didn't. anyways, uh, that's kind of at the extreme end of being prepared. But you get the idea. So they all came super prepared, but they came together as a team. So absolutely, you can do that. Okay. Yeah. So, so the way that the, the general formation of the team part, I kind of skipped over that. I just said you form teams. So depending on the format, if you specifically go to a startup weekend, the idea is that you go and you know, people get up and pitch, and then they kind of whittle it down. And then they'll put like um, a large poster board on the wall and say for team A, right, this is who wants to join, and for team B, so the, the person who is pitching the idea will stand next to, this for, next to this piece of paper and people will come up and say, hey, that was a great idea. Can I join your team? What kind of specific skills are you looking for to build this, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, so it's not completely self-forming. There's a little bit of kind of stuff that happens before that. Or the, a lot of people just show up as a group with their own team preformed. Um, but a lot of people just show up on their own. So yeah, that's typically how it happens, right? But again, that varies depending on the format of the specific hackathon that you're going to. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, please. Everyone, actually. Oh, okay. So, right. So that was part of the budget for that. So we would get uh, 
Red Bull and beer and uh, the bean bags and <laughs> Red Bull, Red Bull, Red Bull beer, beer and bean bag, bag right? right? That's all you need for a hackathon. Maybe some food. Now I mentor with a lot of other very similar experience actually. Uh, we did recently an, an all winners uh, hackathon. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two ladies from London who are actually doing it. I was one of the mentors there. So all the participants to each other. And within the next uh, few hours, couple of hours, they actually form teams and they say, hey, I want to work on this side. So that's exactly what Okay, excellent. Thank you for the comment. So uh, we're kind of at time now. So what I want to do is spend, a, I'm going to go over for a couple of minutes. What I want to spend the last few minutes talking about is some of the things to be aware of and some of the things you do post-hackathon if you really have a good idea or something that kind of gels and comes together very, really nicely. So the first thing is be careful of who owns the intellectual property, right? Now, I'm the first person to tell somebody that an idea is worthless, okay? Most of the 99.99% .99 of the time an idea is worthless. There are a lot of people, I, in Atlanta, I run the Atlanta Mobile Developer Meetup, right? something I do for the community. And a lot of times there'll be an excited person who comes and like, hey, I've got this great idea. When you're at, uh, and hopefully this person doesn't mind me sharing his idea, he's already got the app out. So his idea was when you're, when you're at a noisy place like a bar or something and you want to order a drink, you can just pull up a picture of like a bottle of Kingfisher and just show it to the bartender. I was like, Okay, that's an interesting, but he was completely sold that it was an amazing idea, right? Maybe it is. Maybe he can really make something of this. And he was like, well, if I, before I tell you like how we do all this stuff in detail, I want you to like sign an NDA. I'm like, no, I'm not signing an NDA, right? So ideas, I'm the first person to tell you that ideas are worthless. However, when you go to a hackathon, you actually build something and you actually try to implement an idea, right? That's when you have to, Think a little bit about the intellectual property around this. You don't have to be too crazy about this, all right? But there are two specific scenarios that you need to be careful of. Say you have a team, right? I have Naresh on my team, this gentleman, these three guys, all these people. I have these seven people in the front row on my team, okay? Uh, one of the things I'll talk about in the next slide is who I want to keep, right? So, uh, I, and say I'm the business owner, right? So the people at this table did an amazing job and they did great, we, they built the app and we got it all running. The people at this table also did an okay job, but they didn't really seem like they were that into the idea. And the people at this table over here, they were like, they just wanted too much equity in the company. Naresh comes around and he says, well, I want to join this company, but you have to give me at least 60% equity in it, right? And you laugh, but that actually happened to us at this hackathon, okay? So one of the things they did, at, they typically do at a startup weekend is when you join a team, Everyone is encouraged on the team to sign a one-page document that says, everything I build over this weekend, the ownership of it belongs to the team captain, right? So if I'm the team captain, I get everyone to sign it, and we start hacking. If something, something happens after the weekend, I don't have to worry about who owns what because I own everything. Everyone has signed over the rights for everything that they built over the weekend to me. And you might think that this is a little crazy and why would people do that? But again, the idea is that you avoid a lot of issues, right? And say you go to a, weekend, a startup weekend or some kind of hackathon and it doesn't, you know, for some reason, you know, you wanted 60% ownership and said no, it helps avoid a huge class of problems, right? And what they do, start, the hackathon organizers will typically encourage everybody who is there to go along that path. Right? And if you find someone who says, ah, I don't want to do this, even if they're the most amazing developer ever, you say, all right, that's fine, go find another team to work on, okay? I hate to be brutal like that, but sometimes you have to kind of think about these things, right? So how many teams continue? Here's some stats. Approximately 10% continue after a startup weekend. This is, these stats are very specific for startup weekend, not just hackathons in general, but very specifically startup weekends. And you have to remember, startup weekends are very targeted, it's well known, they do startup weekends all over the world, and you know, they have professional organizers who kind of organize and mentor people during the thing. Right, so only 10% continue after that, and out of those 10%,
approximately 5% of them are only alive after a year. So there's a very, very low success rate for hackathons, specifically startup weekends, right? But this makes sense. Everyone knows that, um, that startup companies fail 99% of the time, right? So one of 10 make it after a startup weekend or continue after a startup weekend, and only 5% of those are still alive after a year, okay? So the odds are against you, but again, there's no reason not to try, right? I don't want to point a negative, paint a negative picture too much, right? If it doesn't work out, that's fine. You move on with your life. You, you know, you do another hackathon or you do an idea on your own or whatever it may be. So post-hackathon, a couple of different things. So if you really stumble upon an idea, right, or maybe stumble is not the right word. You come and build an idea and you, you win that hackathon, or even if you don't win, you think you really have a great idea, right? So the judges give you good feedback and they say, that, yeah, this may actually be pretty good or you talk to people in the community, um, all right? So typically, what I would say is that you identify just the team members you want, like I was talking before, I was pointing at these three different groups of people sitting in the front. You identify just the people you want, and you don't need to have a huge team, all right? You typically want not more than four people, including you, at the beginning. You just don't need that many people, right? You need a business person and three developers, maybe. Right? And maybe a designer in there, okay? And when, when you do start on this, you get, right, this is after the hackathon again, right? And you're trying to make a real business out of this. You get the team members to sign a work for hire hackathon, or work for hire, again, before the hackathon starts, uh, and then after you identify the folks you want to give, you create a, or you create a company, you know, the company owns all the intellectual property, you transfer it to the company, um, and you don't have to worry about IP issues and other things like that, right? You basically iron everything out up front. You tell folks how, many, how much equity you have. You say we want to reserve 50 or 60 percent of the equity for investment. So you know our slice of the pie will only be 30 percent, and this is how we're going to split it up, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So this is typically how I would suggest approaching a post hackathon organization for building a company. All right, and I'll leave you with this quote from somebody named Mohandas Gandhi. Um, a, a lot of folks who, I've given this session before, actually I've given it here in India before at another conference, and I also gave it in um, Mexico uh, a while back and also in the US. So I think a key point for a lot of people is people come to this session because they're just interested to say, hey, what are the things that, you, you know, that I need to do to win a hackathon and maybe to do a startup from scratch? because there's, there's nothing like doing a startup on the ground floor. It's, it's fun to join a startup that's already been established, that's already raised money, but it's not as much fun or as much stress <laughs> as doing a startup from the ground floor. So if you are interested in getting into the startup world, a hackathon is a great way to launch into that. Now you have some tips to help you essentially springboard off of it and get like a jump start when you go to a hackathon Again, Hackathon is a great way to jumpstart your experience into building a startup. But a lot of this has to do with making sure you have the right mindset, that you put the specific actions into place so that, number one, you can be successful, and number two, you do the right things up front to set yourself up for success over the long term. Right? So for my own company, we spent a lot of time up front thinking about things, not, not too much, Right? We thought about things a little bit, but we put those thoughts into action as quickly as possible because we didn't want to waste our investors' money. So we immediately went and raised a seed round about two weeks later because we had so much momentum from winning the startup, the startup weekend hackathon. We had investors who were like, hey, this is a really great idea. We might be interested in investing. So what do we do with that idea? We immediately put it into action. All right, that's great. Let's talk. Let's put together a term sheet and let's raise some money, right? Or you give us some money, right? So we use that money to get seed. We built a prototype. We tested it in the marketplace. Again, action. As, as quickly as possible, build an MVP. See how good it is. If we need to iterate on it further, let's extend the MVP. Let's put it out into the marketplace. Within three months of doing the startup weekend, we had a app for sale, the first version of the Tri Triplingo app for sale on the App Store generating revenue. Within three months, a polished, 
app for iOS and for Android. All right, again, putting action into play. Don't just think about it. Get moving. Get busy. All right, so thank you for coming. I know we're probably exactly at time now. Uh, I'll be around for a little bit if you guys still want to chat, uh, but I think they want to do the keynote or something in this room, right? All right, thanks for coming, guys.